have over 30, 31 to be exact, different formulas today that I'm going to give you my finalized speed reviews on. If you're new here, I do these speed reviews periodically. I take them very seriously. This video, I'm constantly working on every single day because I have a drawer dedicated to all of the products that I'm trying and I'm constantly testing products out multiple times in multiple ways so that I can come back and update you on my thoughts now that I have had the time to really finalize my opinion on these products. If there's some products missing, one, I feel like I have either covered it in other videos and don't need to come back to it in this one, or two, I'm still just testing it. But it definitely was time for me to do this video. I have a lot of products that I'm ready to share my thoughts on. I do a lot of first impression reviews on my channel and I will say I'm pretty good at getting it right the first time but sometimes there's things I miss so that's why I also like to do these. So let's get started with... Oh, Okay, I'm not wearing this one on my face, but I did do a demo the other day that will be overlaid. Okay, I've finally gotten a handle of the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. I've been testing this the last month and I'm here to tell you I don't like this product. Now, keep in mind, I do have dry skin, but even now I'm living in a humid climate, so typically my skin reacts well to humidity in terms of my skin isn't dry in the humidity. It definitely shifts to a more normal skin type and I don't like this. It looks really powdery on my skin. It emphasizes things that honestly I didn't even realize were there. If you have extremely oily skin, I think this is something that you actually might enjoy, but any sense of dryness, this is not a good product. It sits really heavy on my skin. I've tried it under makeup. I've tried it over makeup. I've tried the universal one, which is completely clear, which is supposed to kind of set the face. You can use it to set at your makeup. I don't like this product. I don't find it to be flattering on my skin, unfortunately. I just think this is a great product for oily skin, but other than that, way too dry looking. Have not enjoyed it at all. On the contrary, I do have a complexion product that I have been loving. I tried this once in a Get Ready With Me on my channel, but I've been wearing this almost every day. This is the Cali Ray Free Dreaming Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint. Cali Ray sent me a package in PR, and I've been testing a lot of the stuff that they at me. I was not expecting to love this. I don't normally like like the skin carry, clean foundation, skin tints thing going on, okay? I feel like everything wears like crap and shows all the pores. This is so beautiful and I have been wearing this out on walks in the hot weather. It has looked really good and healthy on my skin. This to me has been the perfect everyday foundation. I wasn't expecting to get so much coverage out of it, but it gives a good, healthy, glowy, medium coverage. It wears pretty well too. You know, it's not going to take me from the morning to the end of the day, but just for everyday wear, this makes my skin look really gray, really healthy. I highly recommend this. It's a very, very, very wet formula, very liquidy, so be careful, it can get messy. But this is what I have on my skin right now, and I just feel like it gives enough coverage to my skin for everything to be evened out and covered, but it looks very healthy and very skin-like, not powdery at all, and it wears pretty nice also, so. I've been enjoying these. These are definitely going to be in my next upcoming monthly favorites because I really, the last two weeks, have been like so into it. I also have this Sigma Beauty Spectrum Color Correcting Duo. I like this. I don't love it. It's a bit more drying than I would like for it to be. I just feel like whenever I wear this, my under eyes look a tad dry. It's not bad. Like I do like it and I like the color correcting element to it. I just have under eye correctors like the NARS one that I prefer that I feel like is a little bit more hydrating for my under eyes, but it's good. Better, it's not great. And if I'm being honest with you, for the most part, I don't do too much color correcting on my under eyes. As I've gotten a little bit older, I've noticed a little bit more discoloration on my under eyes, but it's never been a major issue of mine. So just in terms of need, I don't normally need a product like that. Okay, I have two setting powders to share with you and a setting spray. So the first one is the Jaclyn Cosmetic at collaboration with her mom. This is the Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Sheer Light. And I've talked about this a couple of times already in that I really, really love this powder. And so normally I wouldn't come back to update you again because I've already kind of done an update, but I love this powder so much that I want to emphasize to you that I am still loving it after all of these weeks. 
what a phenomenal powder. I think it does a really nice job of smoothing the skin, just make setting the makeup. It just makes the makeup look really great. It's not like the most blurring powder I've ever used, but it's up there. This just makes the skin look great. I don't know. I'm still loving it. That's all I can say about this. <laughs> the other powder that I have is from Sigma Beauty. This is the Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder in Fairy Dust. It's taking me a lot of tries to figure out how to use this powder. At first, I used it as a setting powder. Don't do that. It is way too glowy. It does not look good. I've used it as a finishing powder. I don't like that. I feel like it sits on top of the skin. The only way that I enjoy this product is if I use it as a very subtle highlighter. But at the end of the day, I'd rather just use a highlighter. So this is not really a great product to me. Every time I've used it, I've just been like, mm, it's there. I don't like the way that it sits on top of my skin if I am using it as kind of a finishing powder. Setting the skin, it looks awful because of the glow here. It's just an awkward level of illumination that I don't really know what to do with this, so I have not been loving this. Setting spray is the Melanie Mills Super Light Long Lasting Setting Spray. I gotta be honest with y'all, I have a severe hatred for this product. God, I hate this. I don't even know if it works. I'm sure it does, but the application of it is just so torturous to me. I can't. I literally feel like I am spraying hairspray directly at my face. The mist is too strong. The fragrance is too strong. I can't breathe. It's like almost pain. <sighs> Hold on. Pull <laughs> the fragrance. <sighs> You cannot breathe while you're spraying this. This probably does make the makeup last long, but I'm done using this after today. It's 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 not a good experience. I bet you it's great for event makeup. It literally feels like I'm spraying hairspray on my face, but I know my clients would punch me in the face if I use that on them. <laughs> Moving on, I'm excited to finally update you on this guy because this was quite the talk of the town for a little bit there. The makeup world moves fast, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury little eye cream cheek all you need on the go five minute makeup thing and I like this I I just think it's overpriced I wouldn't necessarily recommend you purchase it so in terms of wear and this is what I wanted to mostly update you on the easy eye wand here it it does crease and I don't normally struggle with the crease it's thundering out of nowhere and my lighting is changing. Thank you very much. I don't normally <laughs> struggle with the creasing of makeup or anything like that, but this does crease on me. It's cute, but it's not my favorite product. Love the Easy Highlighter one. This is actually one of my favorite stick highlighters. I don't like any, but I love this one. And the Lip and Cheek is fine. I don't really love it on my lips. It's fine on the cheek, but this is like solid. You know, the formula works. The packaging idea, it's kind of unique, but it's $75 and yeah I mean I like it but if you don't have $75 to spend don't waste your money okay let's start off with cream bronzers also from Charlotte Tilbury is the what are these beautiful skin sun-kissed glow bronzers absolutely love these I have two shades light and medium I really like the medium I'm more partial to the medium for some reason I think it's just because I do have a little bit of a tan now but normally I'm more into the fair shade which is a little bit more cool toned I love the consistency of this I think this is great for summer normally I'm not an advocate for cream products in the summer I just be too sweaty but this is kind of like a, a moussey formulation so you get the look of a cream bronzer and the blend of a cream bronzer but it lasts longer than a cream bronze because of that moussey formulation I love this cream bronzer. I think this is a really great one. If you have oily skin and you want to try cream bronzers and normally they just slip and slide on your skin, this one is not too emollient. This one will be good for you. And I like the way that it looks. The pigmentation is really even and I've already updated you on this, but I just wanted to give it more time on my channel because I love it. <laughs> okay, and then the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. So I like these a lot. I have light and light medium. How I like to use these is on bare skin, and this is what makes this formulation different from a regular cream bronzer. This looks great on bare skin, the perfect no makeup makeup 
option. So on days that I'm going for the known makeup makeup look, I am definitely using light here. I would probably recommend if you're around my skin tone to get light medium, but if I don't have any base on, I like to apply this and the finish of this is glowy and it's not the typical kind of glowy cream bronzer look that you get. It's different. I don't know how else to describe it, but I really do think that this is a unique and useful product. And then I am wearing light medium today since I do have a little bit of coverage underneath. Uh, so these can be used on foundations or under foundations or on their own. What makes these special to me is how I can use this alone on my skin with a little bit of concealer in the center of my face. My makeup looks really, really great. So I've been enjoying these. These have been a unique enough product in my collection. Now, the duo with these that these came with was the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfectors. I also have light and light medium. To me, these are not worth it. I haven't fallen in love with it. I didn't want to believe when I bought this that this was really just to like set this product because that's a lot of money for it to have that purpose. So in my initial review, I did try it in different ways. I tried it all over my face to see if we could get more from it. But you really can't, honestly. The only thing that this product is good for is setting the balm. And I mean, yeah, they look good together. This gives a pretty glow, but I just don't think that these are worth it. I mean, I've liked it. You know, I don't have anything bad to say, but I just think it's kind of an extra unnecessary step if that makes sense. I like the fade in here. I like that if I want to contour more, I can go into the bottom. It gives a nice sheen, but it's not anything I can't get with just a regular powder bronzer, honestly. I have glowy powder bronzers. I have matte powder bronzers. I didn't need this. These are more cash grabby to me than the actual balmy product. The balmy product I actually find to be unique and useful. This I, I don't. It's just my opinion. You know. I have a couple powder bronzer formulations. The first is from ColourPop. So excited that ColourPop came out with cream bronzers. These are the matte bronzers and I think they are beautiful. So my everyday preference has been a Villa Beach. This is the one that I put on in my demo. It's a little bit more on the neutral side, which is why I like it. But when I'm going for a bronzy look, Summerland Beach is really, really nice as well. So there's multiple colors that I like. I feel like they're range was a bit odd. They had a few odd colors here and there. It might be a little bit more on the difficult side to find the color that works the best for you. But these are such a solid bronzer formulation and you know ColourPop does not have a lot of bronzers in their line. These aren't the best bronzers in the world but I'm excited that ColourPop came out with a really solid bronzer formulation and I am still loving them. Another formulation that I've been enjoying but I do think is a bit overpriced are the Sigma bronzers. I like light for more natural makeup and I have medium in my hands right now, which I will do for a more dramatic look or a more dramatic bronze. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about these bronzers. They apply so solid. You know, it's just a really good bronzer. The only thing is they are $35 individually, which is way too much for a Sigma bronzer. But Sigma also has a lot of sales. So like you can probably get this for 30% off. And in that case, I do recommend these bronzers. All of the powder products that I'm about to talk about is the same situation, but at full price, no. Same thing with the blushes. I've been loving these blushes. I have been using them absolutely like non-stop, you guys. Today I'm currently wearing Tiger Lily. I think that the shimmer formulation in here is beautiful. I prefer the shimmer colors. The mattes are really great as well. I've been using Tiger Lily, Bronze Star, and Berry Love the Most. Love these, but for $35 each, do not buy these. But if you can get them for like 30% off, really great formula. But the shimmer blushes are awesome. I, I have also been loving the highlights, you guys. These individual launches that they did, so beautiful. The one that I've been using the most is Savannah. This is my favorite. I think it is gorgeous. I love having it, but I would not have paid $35 for these. But Sigma did a beautiful job with these launches of these individual products. But make sure you have a code. Do not spend full price on that. You know, don't pay $35 for one shade. 
Anyways, why am I getting worked up over that? It's a good product. <laughs> That's just my thought. I don't want you to spend that much money on it. Lots of Sigma in today's video. I've just been using a lot of their products recently. So this is something I'm super late to the game on, but I love this. This was sitting in my makeup drawer to dry for the longest time. And finally, one day I did it. And then I kept doing it. I kept loving it. <laughs> so this is the Sigma and Cinderella cheek duo. Wow, this cheek duo is so gorgeous. I love the highlight in here. It's quite blingy. And then it's just a nice pretty peachy blush. It's been great for a thoughtless cheek look when I'm getting ready in the morning. I mean the quality is really nice. The packaging is really cute. If you can get this on a discount, definitely recommend it. I like it and it's, it's so cute. Okay. So again, kind of later to the game on these, but I got these in a PR package and I was so excited because I didn't want to spend my own money on them, but totally worth it had I known. These are the Bare Minerals bronzers. So they're supposed to be like a bronzer and a blush all in one. I don't agree with that. They do have a little bit, not even much of a bronzy tone, but it's just toned down. It's not bright. I'm still applying a bronzer before these, but they do blend into a bronzer shade seamlessly because of their tone. But I love the way that these are Apply. And I love the sheen that they have on the cheek as well. I've been using these all the time. My favorite is Kiss of Pink because I do love a nice pink color. But I did not know that Bare Minerals had it in them with this formula. This formula is incredible. I feel like it's unlike anything in their line. It's very odd, but these are phenomenal. Highly recommend these. I've also been using, not religiously, but I'm here to update you on the Odin's Eye Soulmate 2 collection blushes and highlights and they're so great. Honestly, so, so great. My favorite ones that I have here, we're going to start off with the blushes first. The blushes are in the orange packaging. I don't know how Odin's Eye does it. These are on the pricier side of Odin's Eye when you think of them, but they really are a very nice formulation and the packaging, the aesthetic. I love Sunset Cloud in terms of the blushes. The blushes are my favorite. This is just a really pretty cooler purpley pink color on the cheek. Really great. And then I do like orange... Oh God, I just dropped one. All of them are really pretty blush wise, but they didn't have enough pinky blushes in my opinion. All of them were very, very warm and I'm not into warm blushes. So I hope they expand the pink in this formula, but solid. The highlights, really beautiful formulation. I don't like the colors that they came out with, so I'm not reaching for them very much. Warm Sunshine is really the only truly wearable color. The rest are like pink and green and I'm, I'm just not experimental enough with those. I think that the formula is really nice. If you like the colorful highlights, I think you will like these, but I'm not reaching for them. If you're basic like me, you only wear like a champagne or a gold highlight, I'd skip this launch because the colors are quite colorful. Okay, from ColourPop, I can't remember exactly what collection these came from, but I have these two new Super Shock cheek highlighters. One is too dark for me, but I actually use it as kind of a blush topper and a bridge between my highlight and my blush. And then the lighter one, Addicted to. The longer I've been playing with these Super Shock cheek formulas, the more I've been liking them. I like to apply them with a damp sponge and pat it into my skin because I feel like that's how it looks the most seamless. I like these. I don't love these. If I didn't receive these in PR, I would have like one shade and then never buy a super shock shadow cheek thing again. But it's like worth it to have the one formula to kind of buff into the skin because it, it really is quite the seamless look. I do really like it, but I hate how cheap the packaging feels. Anyways, they're okay. <laughs> the Jaclyn First Base Eyeshadow Primer. I don't struggle so much with longevity, but I enjoy this for a natural look because I feel like it doesn't even out the eyelid, but it blurs the eyelids a little bit. So when I do a natural makeup look and I'm applying something on my eyelid, sometimes I don't want the full coverage of a concealer or the full coverage that some eye primers give. This is perfect to apply just to kind of slightly even things out, but still make it look super duper natural. So I can't speak on the, on the longevity of this, but I feel like this is great for mature lids and it's great for no makeup makeup. Okay, eyeliners. I have two different formulas that I've been playing with. The first is the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Color Inks. So once you get these on, they are not budging. Longevity on these guys is amazing. I don't like the application on these. They're that felt tip. I don't know. I have problems with precision when it comes to the style of eyeliner. So that is on me, not the product. But I hate when I'm applying this and it gets into my lashes and makes them all crumbly and unless I'm wearing false lashes then my lashes are gonna look like 
trash because it makes my lashes stick together. I don't have many that I'm working with to begin with. So then when I put mascara on top, I look like I have about two eyelashes. So unless I'm wearing falsies, I don't really love how this makes my lashes look. I mean, I do try and clean them, but it, <laughs> the formula is great but I can't wear these on days I'm not wearing false lashes. I did a pretty good job of cleaning them up today because I did use the brown, but I applied it too thick. I, like I said, I struggle with precision with this product, but it's gonna last all day. So it is really good for longevity in the summer, but I hate the application, so. I also have been using these hard candy long wear eyeliners. I gotta give these credit where credit are due. I do feel like these last a long time, but application on these, again, is like, complete trash. You get no pigment with these. You have to be really rough with your eyes and I do have sensitive eyes. I haven't, I have not been enjoying these. They aren't pigmented enough. They last, but they're not worth it. I don't recommend these. They sent me a bunch of colors. I've been using these three. No, I don't like them. I have the Melt Slick Waterline Eye Pencil in the shade Ivory. I have a brown version of this that I absolutely cannot stand because this formula is so slick. You have no control. You will make a mess. The product will run everywhere. I like this one a little bit more. I've been using it to correct my face. You know, I've been using it to set my eyebrows, to clean up eyeliner. I, it lasts a good time in the waterline. It still is too slick, but in this shade, I like it a little bit more. It's more useful. Eyebrows, I have been testing. I think this is from a smaller indie brand. The Bay Brow Hold Up Brow Styling one. I have it in my brows today. I like it. I don't love it. I don't think it's as good as the ABH. It's a little less heavy duty, but maybe that's why I like it. You know, I think the ABH is more heavy duty. So this does not have the hold of ABH, but I like this more than the e.l.f. It's like mid-range for me. It's better than the e.l.f. gel, but not as good as the ABH. I like the packaging of it though. It works, it's solid, but it's not a game changer. One mascara to share with you, the Cali Ray. Come hell or high water no i don't know what this is the cali ray clean mascara i did not like this the first time i used it i like it a lot more i feel like it can make my lower lashes look really nice the problem with this is this is nearly impossible to get off on the eyes i have to be really rough on my eyes in order to get this off so i like this better now because i do feel like it makes my lashes look better but it's so hard to get off that i'm never tempted to reach for it so just a fair warning two kind of eyeshadow-ish formulations so these are from the Cleona and Emily Violet Marie collaboration. They are multi-chrome highlighters. I don't really like these on the face, but on the eyes, that's the catch. These are beautiful. I've been wearing these to dinner. So the shade Patea, which is like a purple blue shift, I wore this with a pink and dark purple outer crease color and this all over the lid. It was so stunning, so fun, unique, but still not too out there. And then Tropico is a little bit more natural, if you will. Again, adds interest to the eye look without having to try too hard. These are stunning, Cleona kills it. Amazing, recommend these. Worth the money, even for just one shade. Now, I've also been wearing, and I have one on the eyes right now, the Star Wars and ColourPop Jelly Much Shadows. It's been a while since I've tested the Jelly Much Shadows, and the formula on these are great. So I wore Astromech, which is like a purple blue shift on my eyes with a berry blush from Sigma in the crease, and the look was so beautiful. And right now, I'm currently wearing protocol which is a gold so this is the more wearable one I love these I think these are really great for the summer they last a long time they look super dimensional on the eyelids they don't crease they're easy to apply these are really nice and they're really cute Star Wars themes so I definitely recommend giving these a try especially if you have oily eyelids I think these will stand the test of time for you so I've been enjoying those um Sigma Beauty these came out a while ago but thought I'd update you these are from the same collection we have a liquid lipstick and a lip gloss so the new mod liquid lipstick I love this it's not too drying it's a the perfect everyday color for me it's not an all-time favorite liquid lipstick for me but it's been really solid but I've been grabbing for it a lot because I love the color so again I don't recommend ever paying full price for Sigma okay I think they're overpriced but if you buy them on sale which they do have a lot worth it 
What is not worth it to me is I do not, and this is just personal preference in terms of colors, I don't like this passionate lip gloss. I think it does weird things to the lips. It's an odd dark color, not very flattering, nothing great about the formula, just in the middle, so I have not been enjoying this. I did try a new shade of the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Rust, a very, very, very pretty red lip gloss. It has a lot of pigment to it. I think that these Maybelline Lifter Gloss are phenomenal from the drugstore. One of the best formulas that you will find at the price point. They fill in the lines of the lips. They are juicy, but they are not too sticky. Just a solid formula from the drugstore. Recommend this one if you like red. This one has a lot of pigment, so I don't think that this is going to be for everybody, but this is a fun summer gloss. ColourPop launched new shades and a new finish of the So Glassy Lip Gloss. I love this line, you guys. It's a perfect nude for so many different skin tones. These are not a pigmented gloss, but they aren't so sheer to where you should only buy one shade. The other lip glosses that I'm about to talk about after these <laughs> are the opposite of how I feel about these. So these are perfect enough to wear over a lip liner to kind of blur the lip liner, but also not too pigmented so that you can put these over top of a color and it's not going to change it too much and so you don't need all of these but go for the one that would be a good match for your skin tone and you will like these these are my favorite formulation in terms of lip gloss from ColourPop as well they have a little extra shine to them they look a little bit smoother on the lips they're very comfortable highly recommend these my favorite shade is Solana right here this nude is the nude for me so these have been great I've been using these a lot even the darker shades two different sets of lip glosses from the limited edition collections from ColourPop the first is the trio, the Lux Gloss Trio from Winnie the Pooh. All of these have like little to no pigment. Do not pay the extra money to get a set of these. I also am not a huge fan of the Lux Gloss formula from ColourPop in their limited edition stuff because they aren't like smooth enough for me. They look gross. They feel a little dry on the lips even though they're lip glosses. So, I mean, I've used these. They're fine. They work, but not worth the money. You don't need to get the trio. The packaging is cute, but all of them look the same. And then I feel similarly about the lip glosses from the Star Wars collection. It's just not as good of a formula as the So Glassy Lips. I mean, first of all, these are colors that I'm not going to go for very often, but they're very, very sheer. Right now I'm wearing Imperial, and I just don't love the feel of these glosses. They're okay. You know, if I use them, I'm not going to, like, take them off and poo on them, but there are just so much other better lip glosses at that price point, so... Yeah, the limited edition ColourPop Luxe Gloss formulas don't do it for me. And then the very final product that I have in today's video is from Cali Ray. This is the Glazed and Infused Plumping Glassy Lip Trip in Free Palomas. I love this. I am shocked. The things that I've tried from Cali Ray, I think have been really, really solid. I have loved putting this in my purse. I'm normally not a fan of like style of lip gloss, but I just, I love this color. Color. It's a perfect everyday gloss formula. It's thick enough to kind of smooth over the lips, but it's not too thick. It doesn't have any stick to it. The color is gorgeous. I've just been grabbing for it a lot. It's a great everyday lip gloss. So yeah, Cali Ray, I mean, other than the mascara, I've been very impressed, especially when it comes to the skin tint. But there we are, you guys. I have covered all 31 formulas with you guys, the ones that I have been making a pretty big effort to test and use whenever I'm wearing makeup. I can put these into my collection now and kind of retire them out of my testing drawer. I hope that this video was helpful to you. So thank you guys so much for liking this video. And if you haven't, please, these videos take me forever. <laughs> Editing, the b-roll overlays, the demos, these timestamps, the description box. Please give this one a like <laughs> and make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you aren't already. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.